Korea. We've got the Chinese sort of on the march in the South China Sea. The Russians are on the march all the time. We have these atrocities in Syria, and yet we seem to be now accommodating ourselves to the regime that just uh, committed the atrocity. And of course, we have Iran extending its influence all throughout the Middle East. The world is on fire. In the worst attack on Christians in decades, those talks come amid new tensions with Russia over U.S. strikes on Syria. Just as military convoys have begun to mobilize, the country of Egypt is in shock and high alert. A devastating bomb aimed at people who thought they were heading away from besieged. Now staying in the United States, a teacher and one of her students has been shot to death. A community suffering another tragedy. Deadly violence in San Bernardino is the highest it's been in more than 15 years. And the city is still reeling from the terrorist attack a little over a year ago. Daesh has claimed responsibility for both attacks after recently threatening to increase violence against Christians. Egypt's president has declared a state of emergency. And in Oslo, Norway this morning, after a police robot was brought in to detonate a possible terror bomb, authorities are trying to determine if there is an ISIS connection. Unfortunately, persecuted Christians don't have many champions in the West. We don't often hear of Hollywood stars talking about Christians being massacred while they're accepting their awards. The most persecuted group in our world today are Christians. In fact, many of the elite readily join in the mockery and the disdain shown to Christians. These are very sad realities, but they must be faced and they must be called out. Uh, as you and I have just highlighted, uh, there's another attack against Christians around the world seemingly every day. And yet what happened in Egypt was unbelievably significant. You know, if you look at what ISIS really stands for, what they are carrying out now in the Middle East and in Egypt in particular, is a kind of genocidal attack on Christians and Christianity. They want Christianity eradicated. And they want to convert all Muslims to their crusade. They want it to be a holy war. And they want Christians gone. And I don't think that narrative is getting the attention it should get in the American media. And I have to say in, uh, in other media as well around the world. Well, I suppose I'm someone that just doesn't understand uh, how you could just be able to ignore such atrocities and I and yet they so do I, I, and that's I what I'm to, trying to struggle to understand. And I, now I think this is a huge story. This is the kind of story that ought to be dominating cable news uh, yes. in America. It should be dominating headlines around the world. The, the press in America should be full of headlines about this. This narrative to me is very straightforward. ISIS have declared war on Christianity. I'm not seeing that being covered enough. No. You have, look, uh, Assyrian Christians in Iraq have gone from one and a half million just 14 years ago, one, the fall of Saddam Hussein, one and a half million to just 200,000. Yeah. That's just, this is astonishing. The rise of Christian persecution around the world is unprecedented. For the second time in a week, Trump administration launches a military strike with a missile. The Kremlin ordering nuclear-capable bombers to fly near Japan, the latest sign of escalating tensions in that region. But in California, street fights broke out between hundreds of protesters and opponents of U.S. President Donald Trump. Hit me twice. Once when I was getting up, it's sad. We're in a season of acceleration. The negative is going to intensify. It's a very serious hour of human history. It's never going to go back to how it was in the 1990s. There's a new norm that's emerging. And it's one of the most sweeping changes in all of our modern times to our everyday lives. They're the self-portrait of the so-called millennial generation. 
It's also allowed us to celebrate ourselves through boastful tweets, humble brags, a byproduct of social media, and a self-absorbed society. May all be contributing to a generation of self-absorbed, self-promoting, self-involved oversharers. And apparently these self-obsessed celebrities, selfie-obsessed celebrities, like um, maybe somebody with the last name of Kardashian. Maybe. Yeah, they don't quite help this uh, phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> what is history going to say about this generation? I don't know. They're going to join in or go, what the? Hopefully they go, what the? Honestly, <laughs> it's really something. I I, I meet a lot of good people. But I believe there's a lot of good people out there, but for the most part, most people, all they care about is themselves. You could be standing there on the corner bleeding and people just drive by you. And they wouldn't want no part of it. They wouldn't want no part of the drama. That there'd be one in ten that might stop and help. You know? Because there's one generation in human history, in natural history, that is very unique from every other generation. One time frame. I walked up to a woman once, asked her what time it was. I was pushing a cart. Me and my wife were pushing our cart. We had all the stuff in a grocery cart. I was pushing. I needed to know what time it was. So I went up to ask this woman what time it was. She's like, oh, get away from me. I don't have any money. Leave me alone. I'm like, I don't want to. She's like, just get away from me. Go. I'm like, and I'm thinking, what could have this woman been through that she's so terrified of a stranger that she... What if my wife was pregnant, her water just broke and I needed help? I mean, who knows? Uh, again, the, my point of worry is a gray area where the uh, border lies in getting preoccupied with it. Okay. To the point of uh, obsession. Okay. She didn't care. Just get away from me. Go. I don't got no money. She thought all I wanted was her money. I just want to know what time it was. And it hurt, man. It's like people. Are, it does hurt. You know, it's like it's humanity. It, what? So many people. What have they been through that makes them so terrified of relationships and people that they just don't want nothing to do with nobody? It's sad. Let's face it. The viral selfie phenomenon will grow along with our need to share our experiences with others. It will continue to be a part of our digital and evolving society. I feel that way about you too, man. I mean, you care. You it's sad it. to see that most people don't. Check this out. I've got over 240 some friends on Facebook. Most of them I knew from high school. I mean, I knew a lot of people. I I got around. All right. Um, 240 some people I know on Facebook. Most of them I thought were good friends from high school. Christmas Day, I Facebook tomorrow, and I'm like, Hey, it's Christmas. I haven't talked to some of y'all in over 20 years. Here's my number. Call me. Let's have a conversation. Nobody. And I posted that thing over and over Christmas Day. Nobody. So much so, some plastic surgeons say selfies are actually boosting their business. I see a lot more people coming to my office and the answer to the question, what bothers you and why did you decide to come and see me? Surprisingly enough is... I saw a selfie of myself and I hated it and I have to fix it. People like 23-year-old model Candace Worcester, says plastic surgeon Nicholas Nikolov. He's currently consulting with her because she says she hates the shadows under her eyes in her selfies. What we see as a trend is people getting into the microcosm of their looks now. A small little wrinkle here and there, I think I'm Boom. bad looking. What does that hey, mean? What does that mean? It means people don't want relationships no more. They're so into their internet and so into their Facebook, they got their fate. This is their idol. Internet's become an idol, man. It's like... My greatest problem with all of this stems from a whole different area. Right. This is the world we live in. People don't want conversations. They want... They don't want nothing no more. I don't know what they want. But this world sucks, man. The way that people see it. Really. But not every world leader is on board with the constant snapping of pictures. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu recently went on a rant when apparently his picture was taken as he waited for a TV interview. Quote, what do you get out of all these pictures? He asked in a video posted on YouTube. I don't understand this new world. I've been a pastor 40 years. There is a significant Biblical illiteracy about what the Bible says about that hour of history. The body of Christ is not prepared at all with understanding of where things are going. 
most believers I know that love Jesus. They go, I'm not really into that. I go, look again at what the Bible says. Look another time and reconsider. Because to move into that time frame with no understanding will cause great confusion and fear. I'll say again, the Bible talks about that generation more than any time frame in history by far. Of all the generations from the Garden of Eden with Adam, to all the generations in the future, one generation is talked about more than all. Why? The Lord says, do you know how important it is? That hour, that generation of time, do you grasp how glorious, but how deceptive? How powerful, but how dangerous? Do you understand the extremes of what's happening? And again, no generation has ever walked that way. There is no roadmap besides the Bible. There's no past generation that's telling that generation how to navigate all the dynamics. We got the Word of God. That's not a coincidence that all the signs of the times that Jesus mentioned, almost every one of them, almost every one of them, they are increasing on a global level making head time, headline news for the first time in history. Almost every one of the signs Jesus said are happening on a global level right now and increasing almost